Hey, hey, how are you? So somebody asked me, well, I get these questions all the time. What is the best computer for software development? So we're 2023, things change, right? So let's talk about the operating systems. The big ones, of course, are Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and maybe we can talk about Chrome books, Chrome OS. So amongst the operating systems, the least useful for programming is probably Chrome OS. You've probably got more hurdles to jump through when you're working with Chrome OS because it's just kind of limited that way. Oh, well, there are apps coming out and so on, but I wouldn't be looking to use a Chromebook to be a professional developer. I would look at a Linux machine or a Windows machine or a Mac way before. How about Windows versus Mac? Well, overall, I would say they're kind of neck and neck, but there's some considerations. Number one, if you're going to be developing apps for iOS or for Mac OS, of course, you're going to want to get a Mac for that. And on the flip side, if you want to develop apps for Windows or you want to use the .NET platform, of course, you're much better off on a Windows machine. Inherently, though, I would say they're pretty even pros and minuses or pluses and minuses rather for each platform. You could argue with Mac OS, you have the built-in command line because Mac OS is actually built on top of free BSD, which is a flavor of, Lint of Unix. So you have the advantage, all those tools are built in. Of course, it's not a big deal to install those on a Windows machine. So again, it's not a huge issue. Whether you choose Mac OS or Windows, besides .NET versus iOS development, besides that obvious, uh, those obvious points there, I would say choose whatever platform that you enjoy overall. If like you also like, if you also like to do gaming as an example, you're probably better off to get a Windows machine. On the other hand, if you just like Mac OS, you'll be fine there as well. So what about Linux? Linux is cool too, you know? Um, you got the power of the command line, modern day Linux distribution, distributions are pretty easy to install these days, good GUI tools, tools etc. Uh, the main reason I don't use Linux these days is simply because I like certain functionality and apps that you find in Windows, that you find in Mac OS. With Mac OS, for example, I like the, uh, the ecosystem that Apple provides. With Windows, I like the flexibility in terms of all the apps that you can install. That said, if you find that Linux satisfies everything you need outside of programming, outside of development, and you like Linux, for the obvious reasons that people like Linux, that flexibility, the, the efficiency of it all, then I would just go for Linux. Again, overall, whether you choose Linux, Windows, or Mac OS, and maybe on the outside Chromebooks, uh, I don't think you're gonna see a huge uh, difference in terms of efficacy, in terms of the operating systems, except for, as I said, Chrome OS. I think you could probably find development apps for Android, and I would imagine you can find it for, uh, of course, iOS. Again, I wouldn't be building iOS, iOS apps in iOS necessarily, unless Apple made that easy. Um, my top three choices would be either Windows, Mac OS, or Linux in terms of operating systems. But what about hardware? So hardware is a different issue altogether. My first instinct is to get a laptop, simply because you can move it around, uh, let's say you're going to go visit clients as a freelancer, as an example. You might want to bring your laptop, be able to show the work. These days, laptops are so powerful that there's really no reason to get a desktop in terms of coding. It really isn't, right? The reason you would get a desktop, maybe if you're doing some heavy, heavy-duty AI work, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, but beyond that, for your typical coding, a laptop is more than enough. So now the question is, which laptop should you get, right? Which manufacturer? Uh, what spec should you get? Well, one spec that I've been talking about for years, you want to get an SSD-based drive, no matter what. Why? Because SSDs run circles around traditional drives, uh, and the read-write speed of your main system hard drive has a huge impact in terms of the zippiness of your computer. But I think everybody knows this now. Get an SSD-based system, no matter what. RAM, ah, again, it depends on the OS, right? So I know that 
on the M platform, the M chips on Mac OS, there's a tighter integration of the RAM with the main CPUs and GPUs, etc. So you don't need as much RAM on an M-based Mac computer versus a Windows-based system. So you need less RAM there. So if you're on a Mac OS and you're writing code, I would say 16 gig of RAM is probably plenty for many years. You could probably do okay with eight, in fact, especially on M-based systems. For Windows, I'd probably want to go to maybe 32 uh, because Windows, and I'm not crapping on Windows, but Windows has to have a code base that satisfies a wide range of hardware from many different manufacturers. So as a result, there's less efficiency. It's inherently less efficient because of the, compati because of the compatibility issue. Whereas with Mac OS, because Mac OS only works on Mac hardware, they can uh, be much more efficient in terms of the software since they know what the hardware is going to be no matter what. So perhaps I would argue you would need more RAM on a Windows machine than on a Mac machine to get the similar performance. So then you look at cost. It comes down to cost, right? Typically, Windows machines are bang for the buck. You get more performance but not necessarily, it really depends. So there, there's other YouTube channels and guys will jump into this in high detail. But these are kind of general broad parameters in terms, you know, you need a little bit more RAM on Windows because of what I just talked about, a little less on Mac. Um, but remember, for most programming, and not all, but for most programming, you're just writing code, right? If you're doing some C++ or if you're doing some Java or or C sharp.net where you may have to compile, then more RAM might be a bit more uh, useful. A faster processor would be more useful. But again, you're writing code. So even if you have a four or five year old computer today, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. You know, Facebook and Instagram were written on computers that are 10 years old now or older, 20 years old, right? So keep that in mind. So what about desktops versus laptops? Again, to revisit that, I would lean towards laptop because of the portability advantages, but if budget comes into it where you can get a nice desktop for a lot cheaper and that's you're tight on the budget, then just go for a desktop. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. The most important thing though, when you do invest besides RAM, lots of RAM on your computer and SSD, have a good screen because if the better screen you have, uh, the better, easier on the eyes, it's good because you're going to be staring at that computer all day. So you want to make sure you have a pretty decent screen. So a nice screen also helps a lot too. So to summarize, without getting into brands, I might do that later. When you're choosing a computer for programming, uh, in terms of the hardware, uh, SSD is number one. RAM is number two. More RAM, the better. Up to, you know, whatever. 32, I think, is probably fine at the max end. Uh, and then having a good screen so that you could, since you're looking at the screen all day, that's also pretty important. Besides that, everything else, you know, you got some flexibility there. Again, let me emphasize, at the end of the day, computers are so powerful these days that even if you have a five, six, seven year old computer, as long as it's well maintained, the disk is not fragmented and so on, you're fine, you're fine. All right, I hope you found this useful. If you want me to explore more in terms of specific hardware with regards to coding and programming. Let me know. I'll, uh, I'll definitely take a look.